All right, guys, we're back for the second part of the podcast and the UFC 248 breakdown and predictions. Sorry, it's a little bit later. I had some stuff I had to do before I could come back and do the second part, but it's all right because the second part is going to be jam packed. And you might even get a third, depending on how long it takes us to break down the two title fights on the card. So we left off with Neil Magny versus Li Jingliang. This is going to be in the welterweight division. So Neil Magny is 21 and 8. Li Jingliang is 16 and 5. And when you look at both guys, one thing you notice about Neil Magny is he likes to play his games at range. He always likes to dictate the pace, judging on how tall he is and how lanky he is for that welterweight division. He likes to keep you at a distance, land good teeps to the body, long punches, and move on angles when you come in so he can get that outside angle and land his power shot. That is that is Neil Magny's game. It's all about range and maintaining the distance. If you're able to close the distance, he can, you know, stuff takedowns and will, you know, get you to the ground if that's something that he feels like will win him the fight. But he mainly likes to keep you at range, keep you at a distance, fire that jab, you know, pop the jab, um, fire that right hand, move, 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 pop, pop, pop. Teep kicks up the middle. If you try to close the distance, he'll jab you. He'll stab you with that front kick and front snap kick to the body as you come in. So you're moving in, bop, bop, and he'll just move, counter, boom, slip, slide, and roll out. Um, I believe he does have a win over Kelvin Gastelum. If I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure he won that decision. Let's see. Neil Magny versus Kelvin Gastelum. I'm pretty sure, yeah, he won the decision over Kelvin Gastelum when Kelvin was still at a welterweight. Now he's obviously a middleweight. And judging on where they're at in their career, I believe Kelvin would probably be him if they were to fight again. But yeah, let's see. So like I said about Magny, he loves to play at range. And if he's fighting a southpaw, he likes to circle towards the weak side and then go off on an angle and fire that right hand and land it right on your chin. He loves... He loves keeping you at the edge of his punches and kicks. If you close the distance, like I said, he's good at stuffing your takedowns, but he does get taken down sometimes. And if you look at a guy like Santiago Ponzinibbio, which was his last fight back in 2018 before he came back for this fight, due to uh, USADA complications, I believe he tested positive for a tainted supplement and something else. And he... uh. Blah, 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 blah. So against Santiago Ponzinibbio, you could tell that if you're a really, you know, well-rounded striker and you're very technical in your approach like Ponzinibbio is and you like to land those vicious leg kicks and your jab is very good, you can keep Neil Magny at a distance that he doesn't want to be at. And you can also fake and feint and close distance and come in and land shots because he's not really that well-versed when it's really, really technical strikers. You know, Kelvin Gastelum's a, a partial, like a mostly... I don't want to say mostly, but he's he is a technical striker when you look at him, but he's more of a boxer and he more just likes to wing shots. Nothing is super technical when he throws his punches, but he does have good boxing. Let me say this. It's kind of hard when you look at Kelvin Gastelum because he does have pop and he does have technique when he throws his shots and he loves to roll and try to slip under punches and counter you. Like if you look at what he did to Michael Bisping, it was a one-two. Bisping went to throw that right hand. He pulled back and countered and, and knocked him out. So he has a good pull counter. But he throws his punches really wide. Gastelum doesn't really throw like from a technical stance and go bop, 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 bop. Everything kind of has a little bit of extra wind up so you can try to slip and roll under the shots and counter. And that's what Magny's really good at is uh, keeping you at range, cutting an angle so he can avoid your power from your shot and then throw uh, teeth kicks and long range attacks to keep you at a distance. But when you look at Li Jingliang, he's 16 and 5. And uh, the one thing you, you notice about him is that if he gets you up against the fence and backs you up, he's relentless up against the cage. He'll he'll throw wild combinations. He'll throw uppercuts, hooks, right hands, and just bah, 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 if he gets you up against the fence. If he keeps you in the, in, in the center of the cage... He'll throw punchy or uh, he'll throw some long range attacks like some roundhouse kicks and stuff like that. But mainly his bread and butter is in his is in his boxing and in his hands. He likes to keep you a little bit off range and bop 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 and just fire the shots. But if he gets you up against the cage or if he hurts you, he will he will bum rush you until he finishes you. This guy is relentless. He's like a shark. When he smells blood, he goes for the kill. He doesn't let you off the hook. It's just constant. Just bop 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 bop. 
constantly pushing you back, trying to lay you out. If it doesn't catch you with one shot, he'll throw again until he catches you in a combination. If you look at his fight that he had against Diego Lima, who's the brother of the current middleweight champion of the of Bellator, or he was the middleweight, no, 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 welterweight champion, um, Douglas Lima. So he fought Diego Lima, and he hurt him with a right hand, and then he pushed him up against Spence, left, right, left, boom, caught him with that right hook again. And uh, dropped him and TKO'd him. And that's where a lot of his attack, his knockouts and his finishes come is when he puts you up against the fence. That's where I think Neil Magny is the weakest in his game. If he's able to keep you at distance and keep you at range, he can pick you apart all day and land good shots. But if you're able to close the distance on him and either get him to the ground or just get him up against the fence and get close to him in either an over-under, a double-under clinch, or just regular boxing range, it's more clinch range when you range when you strike up against the cage, but you know you're still throwing your combinations and your and your punches. So when I gotta go with a winner here, I'm gonna go with Li Jingliang to actually get the finish. I just think that Magni's gonna be able to keep him at range for a little bit in that first round, but I think that Li Jingliang eventually is gonna be able to cut him off against the fence and close the distance and land a bomb and uh, drop him and TKO him. I'm actually gonna go with a. We'll go with a second round TKO for Li Jingliang. I think this is a fight that's tailor made for him. Obviously, Magni has fought some of the best in the world. He fought Kelvin Gastelum, fought Rafael Dos Santos, Dos Anjos, fought um, Santiago Ponzinibbio, fought Carlos Condit, fought some of the best guys in the world. But I just think that Li Jingliang has too much power and is too crisp, and he has too much pressure and pace when he hurts you to uh, get beat by Neil Magni here. And yeah, I'm gonna go with a second round. We'll go with a KO, actually. I think he's going to catch him with a shot and knock him stiff, kind of like what Santiago Ponzinibbio did to him in his last fight. All right, all right. Up next, a really, really, really solid fight in the uh, lightweight division. And it's, again, it's Benil Dariush, who's 16-4-1, up against Drakkar Close, who's 10-1-1. This is a fantastic fight, and it's a really tough fight to call on paper. When you look at the uh, intangibles here, Benil Dariush has a 72-inch reach advantage. Reach? Not reach advantage. That'd be kind of crazy, wouldn't it? Um, Jakar Close has a 70-inch reach, so it's a 2-inch reach advantage for Benil Dariush. He has 19% of his wins coming by KO, by way of KO, 44% by submission, and 38 by decision. Jakar Close has 40% of his wins by way of knockout and 60% of his wins coming by way of decision. So Jakar Close is always looking to uh, be patient, you know, pick you apart from the outside, land good shots, get out of the way, and uh, point fight you to a decision. He can finish if he wants to, but I think every single one of his fights in the UFC has gone to a decision. He's fought guys like Lando Venata, Bobby Green. Uh, who else has he fought? So... Um, let's see. So he beat Mark Chikese, he beat Bobby Green, he beat Lando Venata, and he beat Christos Giagos. All these wins came by decision, but he's just a very technical guy, and you would you would expect it from him when you go look at who he trains with. He trains with John Crouch out of the lab, who also trains uh, the former UFC lightweight champion of the, of the world, Benson Smooth Benson Henderson, who also now he's in uh, Bellator and he fights in the I feel I believe when he went into Bellator he tried to go to the welterweight division and then he ended up moving back down to 155 but you could see that that camp out of the lab is very technical in their approach anyway they like to uh pick you apart keep you at a distance make land shots and get out of the way of your attacks and just kind of win the fight on points when you look at Benil Dariush however He's got 40. So when you break down the, uh, I would say that out of the more well-rounded guys, I would say Benil Dariush is probably the more well-rounded. He's got amazing grappling and amazing jujitsu. If he gets a hold of you and gets you on the ground, he will control you on the top and eventually look for a submission and lock it up. He's on a three-fight win streak. He has a decision win over Tiago Moises, a second-round submission over Drew Dober, which looks pretty good right now considering what Ju Drew Dober just did to uh, Nasrat Hakparast on the UFC 246 prelims. He landed, uh, he landed a vicious right hand and put him to bed with one shot. And then uh, he has a, round, a first round submission win over Frank Camacho. So a submission over Drew Dober, a submission over Frank Camacho, and a decision over Tiago Moises. And then, like I said, with your car close, he's got decision wins over March Casey, Lando Venata, and Cristo Chiagos. I don't know who's fought the tougher competition. When you look at their recent fights, I would say your car close has probably fought the more... Uh, the more difficult competition. But when you look at career overall, I mean, 
Benil Dariush fought Edson Barbosa, for God's sake. So, I mean, that's one of the toughest guys in the lightweight division. He was winning the fight, and then he got caught with that flying knee and put to sleep. It was a terrible knockout. If you haven't seen it, look it up. Benil Dariush versus uh, Edson Barbosa. But when you look at the intangibles of this fight, so when you look at your car close, he's good at transitioning from the striking to the grappling. He'll throw a jab, keep you at range, bop, bop, throw the strikes, and immediately get into clinch range and close the distance. One of the best strikes I think that Drakkar Close throws is his low kick. His, his outside low kick or calf kick or cut kick, whatever you want to call it, is very good, and he used it extremely well against Lando Venata. Obviously, Venata's very in and out, you know, slipping, sliding, throwing some spinning back kicks, jumping roundhouse kicks, uh, switching stances and mid-combination and stuff like that, but Drakkar Close was able to win that fight by closing the distance and then by using that jab to that outside low kick. Jab, low kick, inside low kick, and was just pe peppering up the legs of Lando Venata. Um, he has really good control over the uh, in the over-under clinch against the fence. If he gets you up against the cage and has that overhook and underhook on the one side, he will control you there. He'll land knees to your thighs, knees to the body. He'll, uh, he'll just put himself on you and pressure you and try to just wear you out so he can win the clear-cut decision. When you look at Benil Dariush, he's obviously the guy who has the better finishing power or better finishing instinct is what I'm going to say. He'll take you down. He'll strike with you on the feet. He'll, he'll take you down, and he'll look for submissions right off the bat. That way he got that submission against Drew Dober. He got him in an arm bar. It looked like he was going to get out, and he actually ended up getting the submission as it looked like Jober was going to be able to escape, but he wasn't. So he has the ability to finish you and get in and really take your arm or take your neck or whatever he can. When it, In terms of grappling, I would say once it hits the mat, Benil Dariush is the more well-rounded guy. In the transitions between the takedown and, and, and the jujitsu exchanges, I would say Benil Dariush is a better, better wrestler. On the feet, I would say Drakkar Close is a little bit better. I think that Benil Dariush is a little bit quicker, but I think that Drakkar Close is a little bit more technical. He has a little bit more pop on his shots. He'll land some low kicks. He'll outpoint you, get you to sh throw a shot you don't want to throw, and then usually exchange in the grappling. Um, obviously, Darius trains with Rafael Cordero, so you know his Muay Thai is going to be good. He has good striking, but I just think that Drakkar Close with John Crouch in the lab are going to have a great game plan here and are going to just be able to land the shots, keep him on the outside, and uh, try to stop him from getting in close and taking him down. Um, it's really tough to decide a winner here. I'm actually going to go with Drakkar Close. I think it'll be a very close fight, no pun intended, but I think that the first round will probably go to Drakkar. I think he'll use his jab to keep him at range, land a lot of low kicks, keep him on the outside, throw some one-twos, shots to the body, and uh, more low kicks and kind of win the fight. I think in the second round, Benil Dariush will have a little bit more success, probably get some takedowns, maybe one or two takedowns. But I think uh, Drakkar Close will be able to get back up to his feet and get back to his game plan. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a split decision, and I'm actually going to go with that. I'm going to pick Drakkar Close to get the win via a split decision, but this should be a fantastic fight. Now we move to the good part of the card, the final fights, the main title fights. And up first, we've got the strawweight championship of the world. We've got the reigning defending strawweight champion, Zhang Wei Li, who's 20-1 and one overall in professional mixed martial arts. She lost her first fight and then went on a 20-fight win streak against the number four ranked strawweight contender and the former strawweight champion, Joanna Jacek, who's 16-3 and three overall in professional mixed martial arts. Guys, I'm going to be honest. This fight is extremely, extremely close. Let's just break down some of the the stats here. So Zhang Wei Li has a 63 inch reach, 63 inch reach. Joanna Yunjacek has a 65 and a half inch reach. So it's a two and a half inch reach advantage for Joanna Yunjacek. I believe that'll play a that'll play a big factor in this fight. Um, when you break down, uh, you know the wins, how people win. It's forty-seven percent come but wins come by way of knockout for Zhang Wei Li, twenty-seven percent by knockout for Joanna Yunjacek, thirty-seven percent submission for Zhang Wei Li, seven percent sub for JJ, and then sixty-seven percent decision. So. This is a five-round fight. Zhang Wei Li, I don't believe... She's never gone five rounds in the UFC. She might have gone five rounds before she got into the UFC. But when you look at the allotted fight time and the average fight time of each of these girls, Zhang Wei Li's uh, average fight time is 11 minutes and 14 seconds. And Joanna and Jacek's is 18 minutes and 29 seconds. 
I think that's going to play a big factor here. I don't expect an early finish, but if we do get an early finish, it will be from Zhang Weili knocking out Joanna Yunjacek. But when you look at the striking, it's really hard to break down because you look at Joanna and she never gets tired. I don't think we've ever seen in any fights, we've never seen Joanna tire out in any fight, even against Valentina Shevchenko. She was winning the 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 end she was winning the third and fourth round, you know, aside from the uh, the throws in the clinch from the bullet Valentina Shevchenko and the takedowns. That was mainly the reason why Valentina won that fight was because she was able to throw Joanna around because of her, ad her advantage in the size and strength department. But she did stuff some takedowns from Valentina Shevchenko, and I think that's going to play a good factor in this fight because when you look at Zhang Weili, she has very technical strikes. Very, very technical strikes. Just everything just comes right out. Just bop, 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 bop. And if she hurts you, she will go on the attack and won't stop until she puts you away. You look at what she did against Jessica Andrade when she won the championship in China. She was getting pressured by Jessica Andrade up against the fence, but she was staying calm. Andrade was throwing those wild hooks, you know, kind of like a Vanderlei Silva. And Zhang Weili just countered bop, with a right hand and caught her right on the chin. And stumbled her. She moved back. Zhang Weili just pressured her. Bah, 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 bah. Hurt her up against the fence with a knee to the body and a shot up top. And uh, finished her off. Before that, though, one thing I think will play a good factor. Because Joanna is, is a very good striker. She's very good. And it, part of the thing that makes her so good is that she uses basic techniques to win these fights. It's all basic stuff. She doesn't throw spinning back kicks. She doesn't throw jumping roundhouse kicks. She doesn't throw flying knees. It's all just jab, right hand, low kick, jab, left hook, right hand, low kick, body kick, high kick. And the one good thing about Joanna and Jacek is that she can kick you from a very close distance. She's so flexible that she can kick you right off a break from a clinch. That's one thing I think Zhang Weili has to watch out for. If they do get into a clinch position, I expect Zhang Weili to be able to overpower her because she is one of the strongest, if not the strongest, straw weight. Or could be possibly one of the strongest women in the UFC. She's very strong and has a lot of power for her size. But let's go back to the bullet, the Valentina Shevchenko fight with for Joanna and Jacek. She had a she had a very hard time with the trips and the throws of Valentina. And when you look at Zhang Weili, that's one of her most utilized weapons. You look at the fight against Tisha Torres, she was able to constantly get that head and arm control and throw her onto the ground. Head and arm throw, boom, get her down. Head and arm throw, boom, get her down. And got her down multiple times throughout the fight in quick succession. So I would expect that to work against Joanna. If Joanna is able to slip out of it and get her back, um, I might suspect her to go for a submission, but I don't really see that. You know, Joanna doesn't really go for submissions at all in her career. Zhang Wei Li has a good guillotine. We haven't seen it much in the UFC, but if you look at her fights outside the UFC, she does have a good guillotine choke and can lock up a submission if she needs to. The key in this fight, honestly, I mean, the key for me is... Who has more weapons? I think Joanna's striking is cleaner, but I think that Zhang Wei Li has more power and she utilizes more weapons. She'll throw spinning back kicks to the body. She'll throw um, Superman punches. She'll throw elbows from uh, the single collar clinch if you get in close. I think the elbows against Joanna will work pretty good unless Joanna keeps her at a distance. For Joanna to win this fight, she's got to keep her at range and use her kicks in close range, middle range, and far range. For Zhang Wei Li to win this fight, she has to mix up her attack, use elbows, knees, spinning back kicks, jumping roundhouse kicks, and uh, a little bit of unorthodox, you know, attacks and get into her grappling. But when it comes down to who's going to win the fight, let me just go over a little bit more of the stats before I give you my final predictions, just to show you how good this fight is. So Zhang Wei Li lands 5.49 strikes per minute. Joanna lands 6.07 strikes a minute. Their accuracy for significant strikes, both of them have a 46% accuracy. The uh, the strikes absorbed per minute, Zhang Wei Li absorbs 2.17. Joanna and Jacek absorbs 2.77 strikes. Defense, 62% for the champion Zhang Wei Li, 65% for Joanna. And when you go to takedown defense, 100% defense from Zhang Wei Li. She's never been taken down an 80% takedown defense. From the from the former champion Joanna and Jacek, but let me let me see and tell you what I think it, it comes down to in this fight. 
Power and variety. I think that's the key. If they point fight, if it's a straight up point fight kickboxing match, I, I lean towards Joanna just because of her experience in the five round fights. I think that from the third to the fourth to the fifth, that's when Joanna would take over. We haven't seen Zhang Wei Li in a five round fight, so we don't really know. This will be her first one. Obviously, she was in one against Jessica Andraj, but she finished it in the first round. So I think the variety of Zhang Wei Li is going to give trouble to Joanna. I also think Joanna has taken a lot of damage lately in her career. I mean, she took a she had that knockout loss to Rose Namajunas. Then she had the five round fight with the Rose Namajunas, where she lost that fight, closer fight, obviously in the, the second time around. But she still took a lot of damage against Valentina Shevchenko. She took some decent damage, but not too much, which is you know saying a lot for her by when you see how dominant. Valentina Shevchenko has been since then. But honestly, I got to go with Zhang Wei Li here. I think her her power and her variety in the strikes and the grappling exchanges are what is going to win her this fight. I think if she lands a right a power shot on Yoanni and Jacek in the in the middle of an exchange, she can easily knock her out. I think she can catch her, drop her and finish her. And you got to think, she obviously went up to 125 then dropped back down to straw weight. She still looked good. And uh, she's had more fights at strawweight since then. But it did that jump up and and then back down make a difference? She said in her in her uh, interviews and stuff that this is the best she's ever felt and the best you know training camp she's ever had. But a lot of the time fighters say that, and then at the end of the fight they'll say something completely different. But like I said, I think the variety of Zhang Wei Li, the kicking game is going to favor Yoanna and Jacek. The clinch game is going to favor Zhang Wei Li in terms of strength. But I think in terms of striking from the clinch and striking out of the clinch, you have to favor Yoanna and Jacek. On the ground and in the grappling, it's Zhang Wei Li all day. She has very good top pressure, good throws, good takedowns. So I just think Zhang Wei Li has more weapons. I think she's going to hurt Yoanna because she's got more power. I think it'll be close for the first two rounds. Maybe Yoanna wins the first two rounds, or maybe one more, one, uh, maybe Zhang wins one round and it's a draw the other round. But I got to go with Zhang Wei Li to win the win the fight here. And I'm going to go with the decision. I think it'll go all five rounds. I think it'll be close. If anybody gets finished, it's going to be Zhang Wei Li knocking out Yoanna. But I like it. I think that Yoanna's experience in five round fights and the competition favors her enough to be able to last. But I think Zhang Wei Li's power, variety, and grappling will give her the win in this fight. So I'm going to go Zhang Wei Li by unanimous decision to retain her strawweight championship. I'm going to actually give this Yoel Romero. Israel Adesanya fight its own part, so I will catch you on the third part, and we're going to stop it here.